Florida will go as far as Anthony Richardson takes them. Who said that? Find out here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Thursday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports and the Giants Country of SI.com. Just ask you to like, subscribe, comment, review before getting into this. And just going to say sorry if you hear my neighbor's kids playing basketball outside, but is what it is that that's how things work out sometimes but uh i started the episode with the quote that said florida will go as far as anthony richardson takes them and the people who said that were pro football focused because today we're going to break down the pro football focus season preview just the gators edition maybe we'll take another time to talk about rest of the sec and who's on the schedule for florida that's in the breakdown but for now we're going to focus on florida and the full quote is Florida will go as far as Anthony Richardson takes them. The belief is he's going to be a breakout star, but that's not assured at this point. And that's what we're constantly left talking about. We'll talk about later too, but it seems, you know, dating back to before last season, people were saying, you know, Anthony Richardson is going to be a Heisman candidate. He's going to be this. He's going to be that. He's going to, he's going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, which isn't even that good because carbs, excuse me. Um, but there are people that have been saying that. Most people have been saying that. A lot of other people have been saying he won't be good because it's too much work to put in. He's too raw. Realistically, he's probably going to land somewhere in the middle, which is fine because the middle between absolutely excellent and where he currently is now, still pretty dang good. So Anthony Richardson I, I will most likely land in the middle there. Florida was projected to have 6.3 wins in, in 2022. And, that's okay. You know, Bet Online, which we talk about, has six and a half. A lot of places are six and a half, seven. I know, um, I forgot who was hosting the Twitter spaces the other day, but it was like middle of the day, and I saw it and I was like, why not join it? And people were like, eight wins is the floor. That's just not true. And one of the reasons for that is that Florida has the ninth hardest schedule in this preview, or well, in college football, but in this preview, they talk, they say they have the ninth hardest schedule, which is. Pretty dang hard. You know, Florida plays a very good Utah team. Florida plays a rising Kentucky team, a maybe rising Tennessee team. I don't know. Tennessee's always rising, but they're just never good. That's They're always on their way to being good, but they're never good. So there's Tennessee. There's Georgia, LSU, uh, Texas A&M, too. It's a tough schedule for Florida. Let, let's not sugarcoat it and act like it isn't. South Carolina is going to look a lot better this year with Spencer Rattler. And uh, Austin Stogner, I believe, is also there now. So this is not an easy schedule. Yes, I think Florida will have seven or eight wins. I think they could get nine, but that that's pushing it. Um, and I get it, wanting to buy into this team. I am also bought into the team, but the reality is there's work that needs to be done. You know, this was not a team where last year could have really replicated what we saw in 2020 in terms of success. This is a team last year where the defense needed help, the offense needed help. Now this year, they got that help. You look at a lot of people talk about it, and we're going to talk about it right now, actually, because one of the weaknesses for Florida listed here is lacking explosive weapons. Billy Napier went out and addressed that. He got he added Ricky Pearsall in the transfer portal. He's added Eugene Wilson III for 2023. He's He's been adding weapons to address the weaknesses, and that's something that we didn't really see with the previous staff of going, we have these weaknesses now. We're going to have these weaknesses in the future. Let's address them. That, that's not something we saw, really. Billy Napier has done that, and I, I believe 2023 will be a contending for the SEC East championship here. I, or, well, title, I guess. To win the SEC East, I believe Florida will be contending. I don't think that's going to be this year, though. That, that's just, frankly, how I see it working out. And it's not me being down on Florida. It's me saying... Billy Napier's doing his thing, but th- there's work that needs to be done. And that's okay to say, like, that's okay to admit. And that's okay to be like, well, it, it, it makes sense that that's, uh, that that's something that has to be 
addressed for Billy Napier in Florida. But hey, winning games is all that matters right now, right? And Florida is ranked 25th out of 130 teams on Pro Football Focus's power rankings. So pretty dang good. You know, top 25 is always the goal. Florida will, I think, get there at some point, at least this season, uh, probably early on, especially with if Florida could beat Utah and then a couple games after that before the schedule gets really insane, then yeah, Florida could get ranked. And again, where they're ranked and what their record says does not indicate just how good the team is. It's more of a general thing. But Pro Football Focus also said Florida's strengths were the significantly improved defense, which, by the way, I did not realize this, but according to Pro Football Focus, again, this is grain of salt with these numbers, the grades, but Florida had the worst coverage unit in all of college football last year. So, yeah, that's, I mean, it's hard to get worse, but also, you know, significantly improved defense because this defense has, I mean, I, I think a ton of talent in the secondary, but they've got a much better scheme and much more uh, focused coaching staff on actually winning games. And they're running game on offense, specifically with Anthony Richardson in the backfield obviously going to be a major strength for this team. And the other weakness is Anthony Richardson's decision-making, which um, I don't know if whoever wrote the Pro Football Focus preview, they might have been beheaded by now for coming after Anthony Richardson's decision-making or accuracy or or whatever you come after. But there were quite a few mistakes where even Dan Mullen said last year, he was like, yeah, like Anthony Richardson picked up seven yards on the ground, but he missed his first two reads and then his check down and then he took off running. So, is it really a good play at that point? Because that's being results oriented instead of process oriented. Uh, Dan Mullen didn't say the results or process oriented thing. That's me saying that. Dan Mullen, Dan Mullen was just vacation oriented last season. That's all that was. But uh, yeah, there, there was work that needs to be done. And of course, lacking explosive weapons is the other weakness. We're going to take a look at more on the offensive side of the ball. But first, a quick word from Rock Auto because today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto with the ever increasing number of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. And why endure those often pointless and intimidating questions of is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And I don't know. I didn't know it was an Odyssey. I am sorry. And then you got to wait while the person behind the counter is like, yeah, hold on. I need to order your parts on my computer from our warehouse and our distributor and it's going to be at our higher price when instead of that you could just save money and use rockauto.com it's incredibly easy to use where even i could do it not an objectively squat about cars go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know exactly who sent you with amazing selection reliably low prices and all the parts your car will ever need is rockauto.com Thanks again for making Lock Night Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. And now we're taking a look at the offensive side of the ball from this pro fo- from this pro football focus preview. Uh, let's say that five times fast. But the first thing that they did was a quarterback spotlight, which is, of course, Anthony Richardson here. Uh, we know that officially it's still a battle, but mm, is it, though? Uh, and Anthony Richardson, like they said, they said his upside is limitless, but you're projecting a lot, which I've said this. We've had Trevor Sikkim on the show to talk about this. We've had Seth Galina on the show to talk about this. Two pro football folks, guys. We had Ian Cummings, a pro football network guy on the show to talk about this. And I've had countless discussions with people about Anthony Richardson because, yes, his ceiling the sky high or even even further than the sky high. But you're projecting a lot of things to get better. You're projecting his accuracy to get better. You're projecting his processing speed to get better and get quicker. You're projecting his decision-making to improve. You're projecting him to stay healthy, which is all a lot of projecting. And you're projecting the chemistry that he'll have with these pass catchers, which that one's the one that I'm least concerned about. But that's what we're talking about when we say, Yes, he has Heisman potential. He has first overall pick potential. But that's a very high ceiling to hit. And yeah, like I said, he'll likely wind up somewhere in in the middle. He'll be the upper echelon of quarterbacks in 2023 in the 2022 season and in 2023, but I think that he does come back 
for the 2023 season because also like let, let's just talk about it from this point of uh, this standpoint right here there's a lot of good quarterbacks in the 2023 NFL draft this is looking like a very good quarterback class from this early on of course we're looking at Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Tyler Van Dyke, Grayson McCall has a lot of hype, although not super into it. Um, uh, Jaron Hall, I believe, is draft eligible this year. There, there's a lot of guys who have the potential to be high draft pick quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson, one of those guys where he's more of a project than any of those guys. So not not super promising for a high draft stock. So maybe come back for another season, have two years of good film under your belt and get drafted even higher in the 2024 NFL draft. They also did an offensive player spotlight in this preview. And the player for Florida was not Anthony Richardson. It was Osiris Torrance, which is a really fun one because of course you talk about Osiris Torrance and we're like, well, he, he's a monster. No sacks allowed in his career. I think it's 15 pressures allowed in three years as a starter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, insane run blocking grade. He, he's phenomenal. And everyone agrees. When we had Ian Cummings on the show to talk about it, he was like, this guy's a beast. Like, he's, he's a mauler. He's athletic enough to play in any scheme and do whatever you want. He's an animal. And that has not changed with the Cyrus Torrance. That's something that hasn't changed. And I, I think most of us accept that he dominated the Sun Belt. So the biggest question that he needs to answer is, can you do the same in the SEC? Which, by the way, Pro Football Focus in this preview talked about it. And the way that they spoke, they weren't like, oh, yeah, that's a big concern. But the way that they spoke was that they kind of don't have concerns. Like They didn't outright say, we have no concerns. But they did say he should have no problem proving that he belongs in the SEC. And that that goes places. You know, just having that, that kind of confidence in a player is big and Osiris Torrance is someone who especially by the film by his measurements by the analytics by the metrics whatever measurement you want to use to talk about Osiris Torrance everyone agrees this kid's good <laughs> like like he is good he allowed a pressure on just 1.3 percent of his snaps which is fifth best in the country I'm um, sorry 1.3 percent of his pass blocking snaps which is fifth best in the country. That, that's just so incredibly, um, not just impressive, but so consistent. 98.7% of the time, he does not allow a pressure. And again, he has never allowed a sack in his career. So Osiris Torrance has been nothing short of just dominant and awe-inspiring, I guess, is a word to use him, and, and that will not change this year. He is going to just do it on a larger stage. And then they wrapped up the offense by talking about schematically what you can expect from this team, which is the really fun part here. Um, and and they, they did their job here. With the offense specifically, they nailed it. They talked about the pistol. Talked about They put graphics that said what it was. Um, pistol formation. Pistol set. Yeah, like, that's... A, a very obvious thing that you're going to see with Billy Napier and Rob Sale as, as the offensive coordinator and the offensive play caller that Billy Napier is, you're going to see pistol set. You saw Levi Lewis. You saw when Rob Sale was the OC at Louisiana. You saw that happen a lot where they were in pistol set, which is going to be great because that is, you know, they, they talk about pistol and they go, well, you've got the, uh, the rushing threat as if you were in single back but you also have the option as if you're in shotgun. You have the passing attack, the easier drop back, as if you're in shotgun formation. That's why it's pistol. Get it? Shotgun. Duh. Um, and so pistol set is something that we can expect. Tyler Fornis did possibly the best job explaining it, which, by the way, check out his sub stack, which is run and shooter, and he's going to be just demolishing the work. We know that he does the work. We know he kills it, so check that out. You can talk about the RPO offense that we're going to see because, of course, the run-pass option. We'll see screens. We'll see slants. We'll see a whole bunch of things from this offense. And it's going to be – it's going to look, I think, a bit more like that modern pro style where you see pistol, where you see RPOs. And most importantly, the thing that looks most like a lot of modern offenses now in the NFL, a zone running game, which – is great because uh, Florida, you know, last year they ran man, they ran zone. We're going to see more 
zone that we did last year, which is a great thing to see because you've got athletic offensive linemen, you've got powerful offensive linemen, you've got offensive linemen that should excel in a zone blocking scheme. And one of the reasons that I love that more colleges and NFL are both running these zone based offenses, these zone run schemes, because that is just so good for when you're in college and you go to the NFL, you already know how to do that. We see so often where we talk about the NFL draft as projecting this, projecting that. Can they fit in this scheme? Can they fit in that scheme? And it's tiring. But a lot of teams now are running the same zone concepts, and that is awesome because you could just go, well, this O-lineman already did that in college, so you don't even need to project that he can do it. It's just, can he do it at the NFL level? But we know that he can do that scheme, and he's capable of operating in that scheme. And then we're about to take a look at the defensive side of the ball, but first a quick word from Built Bar because – it is summertime. It is hot, by the way. I'm I'm dying right now. Um, but but it's summertime, and I get it. It's a little bit late to start working on the summer bod, but it's never too too late to start working on that summer bod. Bill Bar is the way that I do it. I've been smashing them lately since I got back from vacation, and I've got a hardcore sweet tooth. Vacation, I was just eating whatever I want, but Bill Bar is coated in 100% chocolate, so it hits that sweet tooth. But it just has 130 calories four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. I get to eat it all the time, and I don't feel bad at all, so I love it. Built Bar is always coming out with new limited-time flavors, too, so that you'll never get bored. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your next order with Built or BuiltBar.com. To wrap up today's show, we are finishing with this pro football focus preview for the college football season. And for the Florida Gators, they put a breakout defensive player. They put Princely Umen Mialin, which is not surprising at all. He had a 19.2% win rate on his pass rush attempts last year, although he was a rotational player. And I have no problem with Princely being this player. I think he's going to have a monster season. However, I will say the issue that I do have is I don't like calling someone a breakout player just because they went from a backup to a starting role. To me, that's not a breakout player because usually when I think of a breakout player, I think, you know, like they were playing and then they got significantly better and that's what stepped up. It's like Princely, he could have always been as good as he's going to be this year, but he just didn't play as much. And so that that's that's nitpicking for me, but like it's the same thing with like, I, I don't even know, most improved player in the NBA. It's like, oh, well, guess what? He played 14 more minutes per game, obviously his stats got better. Um, That's just, that's just, that's like the most boomer thing about me, I think. But yeah, I don't like to call him a breakout player, but I get it because he's someone who you don't really know and he's going to just erupt onto the scene, we think. But again, more projecting, but Princely Uman Malin is the player that they're talking about here. And then they did a defensive player spotlight similar to Osiris Torrance with the offensive player spotlight. And this one was Jervon Dexter, which is not surprising. But one thing that was surprising for me was how productive Jervon Dexter was when he lined up as the zero or one tech, which again is either head up with the center or right on the shoulder of the center. He had an 84.6 pass rush grade, which again, take with a grain of salt, but that was fifth best in the nation. And that's something that I didn't think he would, which I get because he's got a quick first step and he, he's bigger than a lot of interior offensive linemen because interior offensive linemen can be smaller at times. And and it, there's a lot of things that go into it, but Javon Dexter was just dominant there, which I didn't think was necessarily the case because you're all, you're also more susceptible to double teams from a zero or one tech because you've got a center and guard on each side. So that that's incredible to see. And also maybe we see, you know, a little bit of Brenton Cox, Prince Liam and Mialin, on the edges with Chris McLellan at three tech and Javon Dexter at the nose. And we just go, go get the QB. Uh, Could be fun to see. We'll see. They also highlighted key starters. And this wasn't just like, Oh, we're going to highlight three defensive starters. This was just key starters on the team. They picked cornerback Jason Marshall jr. Who we all know, we all love. He's been, so hyped up this offseason, which is a good thing because he, he's a phenomenal cornerback. I'm not taking a single thing away from him. I'm not even saying that we're overhyping him. I'm saying that he's been hyped up deservedly. You got Brenton Cox Jr., who, I mean, one, I thought was going to go into the NFL draft after last season, but came back for one more year, and I think he's going to crush it because 
The question with Brenton Cox Jr. has never been, is he good enough? The question with Brenton Cox Jr. has always been the motor. And I think him coming back for another year kind of kind of shows that he's going to be like, well, I'm going to come back and I'm going to answer that question. And if he answers that question, I think we're looking at a day two pick there. I think Brenton Cox Jr. has just insane talent. And Ventrell Miller was the other key starter, our probable green dot player. He, he's just such a throwback linebacker. That's not a complete liability in coverage, although that's not necessarily where you want to see him most at. But when they run the ball, Ventro Miller is the guy that's going to make the play more often than not. So I have no problem with him being on the field in any situation and doing anything. I think Ventro Miller, beast. And the scheme that they spoke about for Florida defensively, which woohoo, um, they, they talked about simulated pressures. That's all they talked about, which I was like, eh, that's, that's lackluster considering what Florida is going to do defensively. We're going to break that down more before the season as well. But overall, I think I think it's a solid preview. There weren't many things I disagree with. I disagree with calling Princely the breakout because he's going from backup to starter. Um, maybe Jason Marshall Jr. should have gotten that role as someone who was a starter last year and is projected to be that much better this year. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I was reading this and I was like, I'm getting kind of excited for Florida football. I, I, I'm getting more excited for Florida football in terms of I'm getting more confident in their ability because I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, they got some ballers at pretty much every position. So Florida's answering the call. We'll see what happens when it comes time because we're, I mean, pretty much next month from football. And it's, it's going to be awesome and exciting. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Florida Gators. Now make your second listen Lockdown SEC, hosted by Chris Gordy of Sports 790. Get the best coverage on the best conference, including the best university, the University of Florida. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole9Sports and the GiantsCountryOfSI.com. And I'll see you all tomorrow.